literally hurts my feet putting them down there. All right. We are live now. It's live? Yeah. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm late to my own life. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? Ah, are we hold up. You got to tell me. Hey guys, what's going on? We just got done uh done filming around our next round of videos. So I got a couple little couple minutes to kill before we uh, head to the airport. So the last time we did a live, it went well. So I thought I would jump on again. Thank you so much. Hey, Maven, Maven. Yeah. What's going on, guys? Guys, I'm horrendous at reading all these. So I'm going to try to get to as many questions as possible. Last time we did this, I was in a car and you guys said that that was not the best place to do a live. So, hey, I'm in I'm in a house now. Um, all right. I see. I can't read this fast. Thank you. I see. I love your YouTube channel, uh, Bob. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. Holy cow. Hey, oh, I love it. Thoughts on thoughts on Cena. I, great question. Um, I got a lot of heat for, for one of the videos that I did where I said Cena uh, with with Renee Dupree. And again, guys, I'm going to use this channel not only to push my stuff, but to push other guys stuff who I think are doing amazing things. Um, I pushed Stevie Richards channel last time. I'm going to push it again this time. Stevie's doing amazing, amazing stuff. I, I love every, everything he's doing. I love his analysis. I couldn't do it. He's doing something I know I couldn't do. So make sure you check out his, his channel. Um, but another guy, and actually it's funny because people, people probably think, that we're all competing against each other could not be further from the truth. Stevie and I, we talk every day. We literally run stuff by each other every day. He sends me videos that he's about to send out. I'm his biggest fan and he is mine. He always, he's one of the first guys to text me after one of my videos goes out. So thank you. Check out Stevie's channel. Another guy doing amazing stuff is Renee Dupree. I did Renee's um, podcast, Cafe de Renee. And if you haven't checked it out, check it out because it's good stuff. Renee, Renee gives a good perspective, great perspective of the business. And he has interesting guests on. But I did one of his podcasts and you know, people were uh, he asked me, you know, somebody asked me what my thoughts were with Cena. And I said and I stand behind it. Cena was not the best wrestler. I think Cena would admit that. But Cena was amazing at marketing himself. And Cena is a star in, a, in 10 lifetimes. I couldn't become the star that Cena became. And my thoughts on Cena are I'm happy for him. I love what he has done with uh, the Make-A-Wish. He's an even bigger star in Hollywood. I wish nothing but the best for Cena. So stop Stop nitpicking and taking little bits and pieces about what anybody says, about what I say or anybody says, and you know, trying to get heat to run with. I love Cena. I love John. He's a bigger star. He's, John's made more money today than I'll make in a lifetime. So I'm not going to. And I'm not a hater. I can promise you that. But that's my thoughts on Cena. OK, I got my partner <laughs> back here. He knows I'm just bad at this. So he's going to he's going to try to help me out with the questions. And I, again, I'm sorry. I just got done in the back putting my makeup on. And OK, listen, I do not wear makeup. I don't know why you guys think I wear makeup. I, I don't know what it's going to take to to prove to you that I don't. I don't know if it's even a complice salt. And by compliment, I mean, a comp, complice salt, a compliment is compliment mixed with an insult at the end. So I don't know if it's a complice salt that you say I wear makeup. I'm going to choose to choose to view it as that. Um, but I don't wear makeup. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm 46. I'm, I'm old. Uh, been had the hell beat out of me. And if, if I don't know, if you think I do, I, I don't, I'm not gonna lie to you about something that stupid. Hey, how, uh, how fun. And remember, if you remember my first live, I can't read. So how fun was WrestleMania 18 with the hardcore championship scenarios throughout the show? To me, that was a highlight uh, besides Hogan Rock. Yeah, Hogan Rock was, I mean, that's legendary. Um, I, I talked about, I've talked about before, that was the first time I ever met Hogan. And um, he introduced me and he asked me if I would meet his son. And I was just like, are you serious? Like, 
your Hulk Hogan. But Stone was a fan of Tough Enough from what I understood. So I was honored to. Um, how was it with the Hardcore Championship? It was just a whirlwind. I literally, I remember going to the Toronto Sky Dome a few days before, beforehand and just, you know, taking it all in, in amazement of just the spectacle of what was to come. And it truly lived up to, you know, what it was. Now, <laughs> we have a video coming out uh, about my top 10 regrets. And one of my regrets, I'll, I'll give you a little sneak peek. In that match, man, I missed the drop kick. I had one move I could do and I missed it in that match. And that's one of the things that still, I still regret to this day, but I agree. I thought the whole hardcore 24 uh, seven angle. I thought that was, I thought that was cool. I thought that was a great aspect of it and riding off with holding the belt up at the end. That was, that was a lot of fun. So great question. Hey Maven, have you ever up here on Bradshaw Briscoe channel? No, I haven't. Uh, I would. Though I mean, shoot, JBL would just literally have to, have, you know, have to reach out and ask me. I would do that like that. I love, love both those guys. I, a few months ago, I was able to uh, see Briscoe at, in Charlotte, North Carolina, at an event I hosted um, called The Gathering. And one of the guys being honored that night was being, it was, was uh, being, I think, presented by Gerald Briscoe. I was the host. Briscoe was the one ho uh, honoring him. And it was good seeing Briscoe. And JBL and I, we literally text each other last week. So, I'm yeah, all all he'd have to do is, if he said, Maven, will you do my, yes. Maven, can you come on my, yes. That's my answer. Do you smell what the Maven is cooking? <laughs> Hey, listen, I uh, that's gimmick infringement. I'm not going to run with that one. <laughs> Craven for Maven. That's the one I'm going to run with. Any thoughts on getting back into the business or are you totally done forever? And I'm, listen, again, I'm, I'm going to hold it right to flip it around. Detective John Kimball, uh, thank you for, for the gift, brother. Thank you. Um, and I'm going to try, I'm, again, guys, I'm so bad at this. I am, I, Ask Cardona, ask Brian Myers. I'm the worst social media human being ever. Um, so I'm going to try to read off names. And if I don't, I'm so sorry. Don't hate me forever. Uh, would I get back in the business in a limited capacity? Absolutely. Yeah, of course I would. Um, you know, would I do something like a managerial role? S sure. <clears throat> sure. People ask me about getting back in, in a full-time wrestler role. I say no for the simple fact of wrestling takes athleticism, athleticism that unfortunately when you're 46, father time wins. And, you know, if you ever heard the thing, twi uh, quick twitch muscle fibers, that's a true, that that's hundred percent true. And, you know, my brain might see something I want to do, but my body just, it would not be able to respond the way I would want it to. And I have far too much respect for the guys that are in the ring now. And they're just, uh, they're just a whole hell of a lot more athletic than I ever was much less now. I mean, I watch Ricochet wrestle. Ricochet does stuff. I wouldn't try in a swimming pool. So I'm going to leave that to the, uh, the professionals, but would I get back into the business in some capacity? Yeah, absolutely, man. I love, I'll take a paycheck. Absolutely. <laughs> and I think I would, I think I could, I think I could do it. I think I could do a managerial or some type of role. Um, if you let me, uh, obviously, you know, I've, I, I think I've let more of my own personality come out now than I didn't back in the day. So I think I'd be a lot better at it now. And I got to put my guy over, look at this microphone. This thing's pretty, pretty intense, isn't it? Yeah. I want to, <laughs> I feel like, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm hosting a, uh, a radio show. Hey, it's the five o'clock drive with Maven. <laughs> Just curious. Ah, bounce. Thank you for the gift, bounce. Thank you so much. You guys are like, and before I get to bounce's question, um, anytime you guys leave us a gift, um, and I haven't ran this over with with my partner here, so he's gonna either be mad at me or agree with me. Um, it it does take money to put this channel together. I literally am getting ready to jump on a plane from South Dakota all the way back to Newark. And unfortunately, United does not fly me here for free. So anytime you 
anytime you give us money. Know that the money is being put towards this this channel. And eventually I would like to even even donate some of the money and let you guys pick the calls. The causes that are close to my heart, obviously with my mom, St. Jude's and something animal related. I'm such an animal lover. I have two dogs, two cats. Um, but anytime I see the Sarah McLaughlin commercials, you know, I tear up a little bit and I think, man, I'd take them all if I could. So keep that in mind. Thank you for the gifts. No, it's being put to good use. Um, and yeah, that's that's something I'd like to do with it eventually. But let me get to Bounce's question. Just curious, how bad do the table spots and chair shots hurt? Love the channel. Thank you so much, Bounce. Um, love and thank, appreciate the fact that you're supporting what we're doing. Um, honestly, and this is going to be you, probably the first time you've ever heard this. Whenever I would go through a table, when I got last, you know, took the last ride through a table, I did some st spots with the Dudley boys through the table. The table actually break would break my fall. I would rather go through the table than go to the to the floor. That's just me. Somebody else might think I'm an idiot, but that was just me. The chairs, the chairs sting. They don't really hurt as much as they sting like hell. They, I mean, it hits you, and I would always like just like tense up and the minute it hits you it's i mean i probably took a couple concussions from it i remember feeling loopy uh, a few times but i just remember it stinging more than hurting it never really hurt the next day it stung more than anything great question bounce what do we got shoot uh shoe goo you were on the last one i remember saying shoe goo my accent made it sound even stupider um if you could ever choose in any song to be your theme song what would it have been thank you for all you did and all you're doing been a fan of yours since tough enough shugu thank you for following since tough enough that tells me that you're a little old like i am um any song if i had any song and i know people can't can't believe i don't like my entrance music if i had any song it would probably be uh, T.I., what you know about that. That's still something that I still, I, I'm, I'm bumping my truck to this day. So there's your answer. Next one, uh, Psycho Bones. Thank you for the gift, Psycho Bones. Yo, Maven, been a fan since I was 10. Uh, I love I loved it. I was part of your childhood. And so I am tough enough. If you had accepted Johnny Ace's offer to come back years ago that you denied, how would you have liked the return to have been booked. Great, great question. And that also tells me that you're following the uh, the content that we're putting out. Thank you so much, Psycho. Um, <laughs> Bones. Um, man, I should have accepted it. Yeah, I should have. Like, I, I was thinking that I had a great job at the time with HSN. I had a guaranteed paycheck and I knew that I wasn't going anywhere. Like, I like in the WWE, they could have literally brought me back in and then fired me two weeks later. When I got released in 05, I had just signed a three-year deal a few months prior to that. So that that in itself scared me. It made me fearful of if I do go back, if if, if I sign on the dotted line, you know, what's to say they're not going to be like, ah, yeah, my God, we completely forgot how shitty this guy is. He's gone. He's out of here. And then what am I going to do? Go back to HSN and be like, hey, remember when I quit two months ago? I was kidding. Let, let me have that job back. That's the issue I did not want to run into. But hindsight's 2020. We all see yesterday through different eyes today. I should have went back. I 100% should have. I should have realized that I'm only going to be young once. And now that I'm old and you know, now that it's not a not a possibility hell i could go i could go sell stuff on on tv now but i can't wrestle now and i wish i would have had the foresight then that i do now but unfortunately life doesn't work that way i wish it did i wish we all had a had a reset button that we could hit and undo stuff undo dumb decisions god knows i'd undo plenty of them thank you so much great question uh code name steve what's up code name steve much love to you maven your videos are amazing ah oh, thank you i'm a youtuber as well and you inspired me even more oh great amazing athlete as well as much respect uh let me what's his name code name steve let's give a shout out to code name steve earlier i shouted out 
Uh, Stevie Richards. So Stevie Richards Wrestling Analysis. I shouted out Cafe de Renee. Check those out. And let's shout out Codename Steve. I don't know what it is you do, Steve, but later on when I'm in the airport, um, probably dealing with flight delays, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll look you up. I'll see what it is that you do. But thank you for supporting us. Um, I wish you nothing but the best. Absolutely nothing but um, M. Finomero. I, I can't read you guys. I'm an idiot. Um, how did you deal with your mental gymnastics of achieving your dream? Good question. Living your dream and then having to detach from it. Keep up the excellent work. Wow. Uh, that's a, uh, <laughs> not exactly, exactly a soup question now, is it? Um, I guess the best way to answer that is in stride. It's just the, the only way to take life ups and downs is for me. And again, I can only answer for me. I can't answer for, for you guys. Um, but in stride, never get too high, never get too low. On my best days, I realize this isn't, life's not going to stay here forever like this. And on my worst, I think it's got nowhere to go but up. <laughs> and trust me, I've had plenty of those bad days. In fact, check out this Friday's video. It talks about the hardest day of my life besides losing my mom. Um, but yeah, for me, it's never get too high and never get too low. Realize that that there's a happy middle ground somewhere in the middle. And also, I try as an older adult now not to try to upgrade happiness. If I'm happy, be happy, be fine with it, be good with it. Don't think I'm going to get happier because usually you just sabotage yourself. Again, this is just this how I do things. I'm not saying it's how you should do things, although it probably is. Let's do the next one. Chris M. Thank Chris M. What a hell of a gift. Thank you so much, Chris M. Gosh, thank you, Chris M. What do you think of, TNA, of a TNA comeback? P.S. Always used to pick up your you in wrestling games. You picked me? Well, I was, I, we just did a video on wrestling games coming out. Uh, thank you so much for the gift. And again, that gift is going to help us make this channel better. And eventually, we're, you know what, Zach, I'm making the call here right now. Eventually, we're going to have, I just, I, I got to get back. I, I can't be, this channel has been the big, biggest, I'm more shocked about this channel being successful than I am my winning tough enough perfectly perfectly honest with you i kind of thought i was going to win tough enough probably with a few weeks left but i never in a million years dreamed that this channel would do anything i literally i remember when our first video came out i i texted my partner and i was like man we have 571 views on one video and i was ecstatic and he's like yeah no that's that's nothing i'll, I'll let you know when we wake youtube up so i'm super shocked and super humbled and super thankful for this and this is the biggest shock of my life now i'm an idiot what was this question oh uh, i'm so stupid i'm i'm sorry guys yeah i'm an idiot but thank you so much for for the support um i'm seeing the questions rolling in here led maven's a legend i don't know about that but thank you i'll take it i'm just a listen guys i'm just a regular guy I promise you, if anybody that knows me, I'm the most down to earth, just regular guy you ever meet. Like, I promise you that there's absolutely I don't think there's one thing special about me. I'm good doing stuff like this. That's it. That's what I'm. That's the gift God gave me. Nothing that like I think I'm special about. I don't. I think I'm the dumbest idiot ever to walk. You know, I promise you that. So, um, yeah, just I I'm humbled with all the, the, the just positive feedback that, that this, uh, this channel has done. And I'm happy to just open up and, you know, peel the curtain back slightly. I know people get a little bit upset sometimes at the fact that I refuse to bury people. Let me explain why I am a type of person that I think if you say something negative about someone else, you're pretty much saying how you in essence, feel about yourself. If I talk shit on someone else, I'm telling everything that I'm insecure about myself about. And I'm not going to do that. I, I'm not going to bury 
anyone else. I'll bury myself all day long, but yeah, I'm just not going to do it with other guys. It, and if that's what you're looking for, there's plenty of other uh, of other content out there where people do that. Um, I'm trying to uplift. I'm trying to help. I'm trying to, you know, pull the curtain back on what my experiences were and mine, mine and mine only. I'm not trying to out anyone on this channel. If you like it, I appreciate it. And like I said, if it's, you know, if you want more, I'm sure, I'm sure it exists out there somewhere. All right. The next one, rocking with Dow, Dan, rocking with Dan Bessels. What's up, Dan? Hey, Maven. There was a video and Dan, yes, your, uh, your thing made my refrigerator. So there you go. There was a video you have posted so far that you get heat from the boys on PS. Hope you're enjoying the magnets. Ah, the magnets. Yeah, the magnet made my fridge. Um, I saw Dan. I met, uh, I, I'd done a lot of stuff with KNS, and Dan would always, you know, come on and support what we did there. And I said, I, I wanted to meet you. And at the convention where I hosted, uh, I got to meet Dan and actually sit with him and have dinner with him. And he gave me a, a magnet. I said, if he gives me a magnet, I'll put it on my fridge. I'm a man of my word. It made my fridge. So, it's under my Bark for the Cure uh, magnet. But have I got any heat from the boys? I mean, if it, if I have, I haven't seen it. I don't really care. I'm not I'm not doing this channel to make anyone happy. I'm not doing this channel to piss anyone off. Um, I Like I said, I'm not going to out anyone with anything on this. Um, and I don't think that we're pulling the wool. I'm not. I'm not putting out information that doesn't exist. If anyone has a computer or smartphone, I'm just giving the information from my point of view. And if you like it, great. If not, kick rocks. Next one. The proud Canadian. What's up, proud Canadian? Would you consider going back to the WWE? Absolutely. Yeah, I would go. I Ah, oh, that's what I think he asked about going to TNA. Yeah. Chris Allen. Chris Allen, yes. Um, so let me answer both those questions. Uh, would I consider TNA? I would listen to any call. There's no wrestling promotion that I wouldn't work for if the right situation presented itself. I mean, absolutely. I still, because in the end, I still, I love this business. I still love every aspect of this business. And even though, you know, I'm older now and um, you know, probably can't wrestle anymore. I mean, there's still other ways to be active in this in this wonderful industry um so would i go to tna if the right opportunity presented itself absolutely would i go to wwe if the right opportunity presented itself absolutely I definitely would great question proud canadian and what was the chris m chris m got to you buddy game over brother love that name maven i wish you were in more video games yeah me too uh curious how much money you got from it you were in SmackDown, shut your mouth. Lance Storm said that game helped pay for his new kitchen. <laughs> it's like, I, this is how, this is when God shows me he has a, a sense of humor. An hour and a half ago, we literally just filmed a video with this game where I talk about how much money I made for that game. Now, I had a rather nice kitchen at the time. So I didn't need a new one, but it was a good chunk of change. But I'm not going to bury the lead. You got to wait for that video. But great question. But yeah, literally, he asked about the video game. We just did a video on the video game. The good Lord has a sense of humor. Next. Jordan, thank you so much for the uh, thank you so much for the, for the gift, Jordan. What is your favorite era of WWE? Classic attitude, ruthless aggression or modern day? Amazing question amazing attitude era by far i think i was talking with my man last night my favorite time was when i graduated college in the late 90s we used to have um two tvs set up and this was back before the days of flat screen televisions we would actually have the tvs with the stand and we would have the monday night wars we'd have a tv and then a tv on top of it and uh raw would be on one and then nitro on the other and whichever had the better programming at the time that's what got the sound and to me that was just i mean you're looking at you're looking at an era with top level rock top level austin 
Um, you know, I mean, Undertaker still being Undertaker. And then on the flip side, I mean, you still had guys like Kevin Nash, um, Scott Hall, Goldberg, you know, doing amazing things in WCW. So for my money and for my opinion, that was the golden era of wrestling. But I wouldn't be a wrestling fan without wrestling from the 80s and the Crockett Promotions. You know, I'll still to this day go back and watch those old um, Ric Flair promos on YouTube. And to me, for my money, those are still hands down the best, best work, best promo work ever. I love the old Four Horsemen stuff. That's my opinion, though. Next question. Great question. Darren Cully. I don't see a question. Yeah, just a shout out. Oh, Darren Cully. Darren Tully. I can't, guys, I really, I can't read. So, Darren Tully, <laughs> thank you so much for the gift. And here's your shout out, my friend. Thank you so much. And again, guys, <clears throat> the fact that you guys are tipping us is just, I, I'm more, I, I literally, literally would be more shocked the, if the sun didn't come up tomorrow than the fact that, that this channel and that you guys are so generous. Thank you so much. Jason Bavilar. The man you see on YouTube is the man you see in person. He's very down to earth, and it was a pleasure meeting him at 90s Wrestling Con. Oh, thank you, Jason. I Listen, I pride myself on, I mean, what you see is what you get. Like, But at the same time, I'm still human. I have bad days. I have, you know, negative experiences happen that are going to affect, you know, my attitude. I'm human. I'm not perfect. But for the most part, like, I'm, I'm, there's absolutely nothing that I'm trying to play or portray you know, on this channel or in this. That's not me. I'm mean, going to drop my water cap, but thank you for that uh, that shout out. I I really do. I try to be what what it is that you see, and if you meet me in person, you're going to see the exact same. Yeah, and there's 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 nothing different than what you see right now. I'm going to say some. Some some jokes that I think are funny. They might or might not be. I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I love to laugh. That's one thing. Next. Uh Brian X54. What's up, Brian X? Um, thank you. And I'm noticing a lot of pound signs, so that means we we're we we have a reach across the pond. Thank you so much. And uh I know the pound's worth more than the dollar, so. Definitely. Thank you. What was your reaction to the massive pop you got at the Royal Rumble when you eliminated the favorite Undertaker and favorite spell the right way? <laughs> also, who booked that spot? They deserve a raise. Yeah, I agree. One of the best Royal Rumble moments ever. Um, the pop, uh, I still remember after kicking him out of uh, of the Rumble, standing up. And if you remember that spot, I go and I stand up on the the uh the the ropes and I just I drink it like I literally I'm drinking drinking it in because realistically two years prior to that spot I was in a classroom teaching sixth graders like think about that transition that's insane um who booked that spot I, from what I've always understood it was Shane's and Taker's idea um which both those guys probably could give themselves raises, but I don't know if they did. Great spot, though. I agree. It literally it gave me a career. I, I'll be forever grateful to to Taker, to Shane, to everyone who had a part in it. So is my makeup running yet? I don't know why you guys think I wear makeup. Like, And if I did wear makeup, that's not the thing I'd lie about. Like That obviously bothers me. Dennis... Ramat Ramanadov. I can't read guys. Maven, what do you think about CM Punk being fired time and time again in 2014 by WWF E and this year by AEW? What's your opinion of him? Um, yeah, listen, Punk's a amazing talent. Amazing. I don't know what fuels somebody. I don't know what it is that somebody's in this business for. I don't know what their tipping point is. Punk maybe reaches his tipping point, and then once he reaches that tipping point, his attitude changes. I don't know. I do know, you know, if you get released, there is a reason. 
I got released because they didn't see a path forward with making me money. That's not the same thing. I think they would say about Punk. Punk has always been a draw. He's always been someone who makes money and makes a company money. I Only thing I hope for Punk, I, I, do I believe we'll see him again in wrestling? Absolutely. He's too good not to. I just, I hope he finds happiness. And I said it before, I don't know what happiness is for him, but whatever it is, I hope he finds it. And I hope he finds just a contempt, a content in his life that if he wants to wrestle, he does. And he finds a home. Um, he, he finds a home that, that provides him what he's looking for. Punk's a hell of a talent. I wish I was half the wrestler he was. Next one. The Hunter's Trophy. Ah, thank you so much. Well, you guys are so, you guys literally are so just generous. The Hunter's Trophy. Would you start your own wrestling school? Ha! Ah, we've actually talked about that before. Um, what I actually absolutely would. I would love to be a part of a wrestling school. The older I get, the more I realize I want to leave a legacy. I want to leave something behind to the business that has changed my life. And, you know, right now that's, that's here. Um, if that was to, you know, be a part of a wrestling school one day, again, I, I'm open to, I'm open to any and all conversations. I'm never going to be a person that doesn't listen to, to, to opportunities. That would definitely be one of them. So thank you so much. Great question. And thank you so much for the gift. How do you know when it's your turn to be eliminated in the rumble? Ah, do the refs outside tell you? Great question. Okay. Um, I probably should do a full video on this one, but I'll I'll let you in on the secret. So before, whether it's the rumble or any battle royal or any or anything, um, backstage, we're giving a, a run sheet, and it's actually like several sheets of paper, and it gives the order of you know, guys that come in, guys that, you know, and you basically you're in there just you know, filling time until your spot's coming up. So if I'm in there, let's say I'm in there and uh, my spot, because I know I did one one time where The Rock eliminated me. And I think the spot before that was something with Kane. I think maybe Kane eliminated somebody. So I know once I see Kane go his, do his spot and that spot's done, then I know, okay, now it's time for my spot to be eliminated with The Rock which was one of the coolest things ever, by the way. Great question, though. Yeah, I have to adjust, guys. My back is not good. David B., thank you for the gift, David B. Thank you so much. Did you hear uh, Did you hear about Sting's retirement? Do you have a favorite Sting match? Um, the, what I heard about Sting's retirement, I don't know if this is what you're talking about, but I, 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 I think the, the picture I saw was that it just wasn't a good house. I don't know if that's what you're talking about. Obviously, you know, Sting has been in the business since I was a child. Um, my favorite, my favorite Sting matches go back to his early uh, WCW days, back when he was, you know, Surfer Sting. Um, I mean, he like he was just one of the you know guys that I loved and I looked up to as a kid. Shockingly, one of the only guys I can think that I've never met. Our paths have never crossed. I don't know how. I've met everyone, and he's not been on that list. Another one. I wish nothing but the best for 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 Sting. If there's any wrestler who has done it and done it the right way, it's him. And he earns he he earned his obvious Hall of Fame induction that he should be put in every Hall of Fame in America, wrestling related. And I, again, with with guys, I. I just want them to be happy. That's it. That's all I want for anybody is just to find happiness. Because I know, you know, when you're happy, it's, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're happy, things take care of themselves. Next. P.S. Great name. Maven, I was in Atlanta for the Rumble in 2002 and have a picture of you, of your face at that popcorn machine. What a moment. Oh, man. That's a, that's a great picture. And the popcorn machine was my salvation. Now, what do I mean by that? When that happened, when the when, when I went through my head went through that popcorn machine, and I go back and I still remember somebody spilled beer on me and popcorn was falling on me. And I think Taker picked some up and ate it. But at that moment, I knew my night was over. And not only was my night over, 
but I was successful. I hit the drop kick, which was the most important. And then I sold well for taker going up the steps. Once I went through that popcorn machine, it was all good at that point. So I, I would love to see that picture that you have. KT core. A mystery for me is how guys take chair shots to the head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just do it, <laughs> unfortunately. But chair shots, they don't let them, let them happen anymore, which is for the best. Sometimes I walk through Walmart and see those chairs and can't imagine getting hit in the head with one. How do you even prep for that? When it, and, and what does it feel like? Man, there's, there's really no way to prep for it. You just, I mean, you just suck it up and do it. It's one of those things in life that you just realize, okay, this is going to suck. Um, I know chair shots have you know, been pretty much taken out of wrestling due to head injuries. And that's, I think, uh, for the for the better long-term health of guys. Um, <laughs> this is going to sound so stupid, but I did it. As a kid, you know, me and my buddies in college, we used to take pizza <laughs> Gosh, this is stupid. We used to take pizza trays and crack each other over the head with them. And like, I mean, we're idiots, but I guess that's how I prep for it. <laughs> but because they, yeah, they don't feel good either. But yeah, chair shots suck. Definitely. Just a shout out. Ah, just a shout out. Broken Helix. Great name, by the way. Thank you so much for the uh, for the gift. I love the love the name. Broken Helix. I like the graphic, too. Thank you so much, Broken Helix. Wishing you all the best. Apocalypse 1280, thank you for the gift. Hey, Maven, glad to see you after all these years. You're still relevant. Well, I don't know about that. I'm relevant because you guys, uh, trust me, it's nothing. It's not my doing. It's only because of you. Keep it up. My question is, which company product is currently your favorite? I mean, this is going to sting a little. I don't watch the I don't watch the products. I just don't I don't watch wrestling. Um, I've said it in previous videos, and I think I said it on the last live. Watching wrestling is just tough. It's literally like seeing my ex girlfriend moving on with her next boyfriend, and that's yeah. I'm I'm you can miss me with that. I'm not interested in saying that. Um, I wish them all the best. I just I, I hope all of them find success. I think there I think there is a I think there is room for for all of them um i do know competition breeds better products in the long run so um while i wish them all success i i basically just hope that the guys stay safe um and you know just make as much money as they possibly can while they're the while they're there great question M mmk thank you for the gift another one from across the pond thank you Hey, Maven, which three current wrestlers would you love to have a match with if you could? Great, good question. Um, love the content on your channel. Keep it going. Um, okay. Uh, great question. Here is my list. Uh, Seth Rollins. Love Seth. I think Seth's probably one of the, if, maybe probably the, one of the best active working wrestlers now. Um, uh, Eric Young. Just because I know Eric from back in the day, and I've always respected Eric, and I've always re respected his work. Um, and let me think of somebody from AEW, because uh, I can get all three of them in there. Oh, John Moxley, love John, love, love what John's doing. Like John is, John is one of those wrestlers that will just at his core is wrestling, and um, yeah, he's he's got more talent in his index finger than I ever had in my entire body. So as long as he didn't want to do a, a, a complete hardcore match, love to work with him, but great. That's crazy how two of those members were shield members. Yeah. Good booking. <laughs> Adam Weller. What's up, Adam? You were gone from WWE by the time I started watching. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> I did you a favor. But haven't gotten a feel for your charisma this year. But haven't got oh, haven't gotten a feel for your charisma this year. I really want you as a manager on AEW. You know, uh, if, all right, I'll let you in on a secret. My time in the WWE, they had no choice but to, to do with what they did with me. And the reason is because I was so nervous, and I I just 
I didn't want to ruffle any feathers. I didn't want to get heat backstage. I didn't want to piss anyone off. And I probably didn't let this aspect of my charisma come out. I hope this doesn't offend anybody, but at this point now in my life, I don't give a shit. I could care less who likes me, doesn't like me. I don't care. For people that like, like tell me you're a horrible wrestler, okay. For people that tell me they never like my work, okay. That's perfectly fine. Have your opinion. So I think being able to just open up and not care what anyone thinks actually brought the best me out that there was of me that didn't exist during my time and my run in WWE. So, but yeah, I like, I think I could do, I think I'd be a hell of a heel manager. I really do. But again, I'm not asking. If it happens, it happens. What's up, David? What were your thoughts on wrestlers coming back from retirement and working full or part time? 100% do it. If this business is something that gets in your blood and unlike let's say football or basketball or baseball or another professional sport, you know, you can't, you know, T.O. just can't come and say, Hey, I want to go start catching passes for the Cowboys again. I mean, that's just not, it's not going to happen. Wrestler wrestling is a business. You know, since we're sports entertainment, that guys can do that. And um, we were actually just talking about uh, Carlito earlier. And how long was, how long was he away? Uh, 13 years. Yeah, 13 years away. And, I mean, dare I say, he looks better now than he did ever. I'm 100% supportive of someone like that, having a career resurgence. You know, go back. Make a name for yourself. Make yourself more marketable. Make money while you can. and Set yourself up for the future. I love it. I'm I'm in favor of everybody, man. I want everyone to win. I, I don't hate on anybody. I want everyone to win. Great question, though. Next one. Does this mean there's 1,700 people watching this? Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> Man, I can't believe you guys ain't nothing better doing two of you even. I'm not that interested. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> Wrestle Rant Studios. Great name. Two years ago, I made a video called What Happened to Maven Huffman. Ah, I saw that. And here you are. So glad your channel is doing great. I actually saw that video. Yeah, I remember watching it and thinking, I'm here. <laughs> but good foresight, good foresight. Ryan Doyle, thank you so much. Another one across the pond. Man, we have a hell of a reach in England. Let's go. Let's move to England. Do a tour. <laughs> Do a tour of England. Yeah, yeah. We're just we're we're launching this Maven tour in England. We get have all eight people. Yes, that tip would be there every night. I recently rewatched the ECW One Night Stand. In 2005 and saw you were a raw invader i was what was the atmosphere like that night and did you fear for your safety given how rabid the ecw fans were not nah, never felt for my never once i have never once felt uh uh felt for my safety in any at any wrestling event ever never mistake passion for uh, aggression never mistake a love for something for just being out of control. That's not how the atmosphere was. ECW fans, in essence, were, I don't even want to use the word rabid. They were enthusiastic that night. Why? Because we were back in a legendary arena and because the guys that made that company what it was were finally being given their due. And, you know, the fact that they twisted and put it, a, put a storyline on it only made it a better, a better product. Now I have nothing but great memories from that night. And they told us, and they actually gave us some, uh, some cocktails up in that, up there. Um, they, uh, they told us, you know, enjoy this, you know, watch it and, and, you know, react to what you're seeing the way you would if someone was talking down to your family, which in essence is kind of what it was, but that, yeah, that was a great night. Never. I've never, never felt that my, my safety was in peril from wrestling fans. Every time I've ever been anywhere where wrestling fans are, I've been never treated with nothing but respect. I like, I, yeah, hundred percent. Bugs. Thank you so much for the uh, you know, for the tip, Bugs. Thank you, so God. You guys, 
you guys literally shock and humble me. I can't, I can't believe it. I'm serious. I can't believe it. Love, love, love your brother, brother Maven. I was born in Harrisonburg. Ah, ah nice, BA, and live in Timberville. Get out of here. Have you heard of uh, POR Wrestling? You should make a video. Uh, wow, well, make a video watching it. I have not heard of POR wrestler wrestling, but I'm very familiar with uh, with with Timberville. I'm very familiar, obviously, with that area. Um, yeah, yeah. When I was in high school, we played. I played Broadway. I played all those, you know, Blue Ray. I played all of I-81. So shout out to Harrisonburg. Shout out to Timberville. And that's country for you guys. Mike, thank you so much for the uh, for the for the gift, Mike. And hey, Maven, huge fan here. Can you give us three behind the scenes stories that someone watching Tough Enough wouldn't know? Love the channel. Thanks again. Okay. Um, I don't want to, I don't know if I have three, but I'll give you one. Um, and here is what you, a lot of you probably don't know. So when tough enough was done filming my, uh, it was right, right. When my mom was, was, was sick and in the hospital, they sent us home. We filmed for nine weeks and after nine weeks, they sent us home. They were editing the show. They were putting the show out. And what you probably don't, uh, I'm breaking your shit over here i'm sorry Zach. um what you probably don't know is after they sent us home for a few months once the show came back out they actually brought five of us back and put us back in um accommodations in stanford and started training us again trained us for i want to say a few months and they trained us without the cameras we were literally just going to tracks every day um it, it j just in preparation for whoever the winner was knowing that they were going to be on tv they wanted people to be prepared so i'm sure that's something that you didn't know and um yeah josh and i stayed in the same room and we went to rent a center and we got them to give us a, a big screen tv for free and we would play madden on all our free time <laughs> wow this is back in 2001 that's so long ago but that's something about tough enough that i'm sure you didn't know i doubt you knew that they brought us back and didn't televise it but trained us for a few months and actually when that happened that was during 9 11. that's when 9 11 happened because i still remember um you know, chris nowinski chris harvard woke me up that morning and told me what was going on in the city yeah, it's a it's one of those you remember where you were at during uh, moments of my life. But I was back training for Tough Enough, training for the finale of Tough Enough. Great question. I've never been asked that question. Great question. P.S. Shout out, P.S. Your story gave me the strength to overcome my addiction problems in 2013. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so proud you overcame the same thing and became a great man. You are today. Listen, I... Dude, I, I'm, I'll never say I'm great. I'm far from it. I'm a human being. I'm gonna make make mistakes. I'm I'm fallible. I'm I have plenty of flaws. I will have those until the day I am no more. Um, but what I do know is there's an inner strength in everybody. And you know, you know when you hit rock bottom, when you stop digging. So shout out to you for overcoming whatever demons uh, you battle and. My prayers go out to you and I I pray for you to continue finding happiness and continue staying on that right path. Listen, guys, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make more mistakes in life. I know that. Um, I always I've always thought that, and I heard it, and I forget where I heard it, but I heard that it the the statement of when you get knocked down, do you get back up is incorrect. The correct statement is when you get knocked down, do you fall forward? Meaning, do you learn something from your mistake? I'm a firm believer a mistake is only a mistake if you keep making it. So, yeah, I, to everyone out there with anything, you have my support. Ice Venom 316, great name. Are you still in contact with any of your former Tough Enough cast members, including trainers? If so, who? If not, would you like to be in contact with any of them again? Um, I, yeah, I, I still text Al 
quite a bit when uh, when the Netflix show Wrestlers came out a few weeks back. And if you haven't watched that, make sure you go on Netflix and watch it. It's a great show about what Al's doing at OVW. I loved every every second of it. Um, but I still talk to Al regularly. And shockingly enough, the past few years, I've started seeing Josh. Um, I saw him at um, a Cardona and Meyer show when I wrestled Cardona with my, that, which will be my last match um, about a year, year, year and a half ago. And I was at the impact 1000 show a few weeks ago. Tommy dreamer had me come out and um, I saw Josh there. I'm so happy with the success he's had. Josh looks amazing. And he, Josh fell into his niche in this business and he's amazing at what he does. And I, another one, I just couldn't be happier for Foodies. Oh, I love it. How did Vince Mc... Oh, and to go back to that other question, um, I I don't... That's Those are basically the only two people I'm tough enough I talk to. I've, I've lost touch with a lot of people like Shadrick, Greg, um, hell, even Daryl. I'd love to know what Daryl's doing nowadays. You know, I know you know, he, he gets a bad rap for, for how he was portrayed. He wasn't a bad guy at all. He was just, you know, he was just Daryl. But... Hey, I hope he's doing well. How did Vince McMahon, uh, how did Vince McMahon or other high ups speak of legacy in WWE? Seems like Andre the Giant is a great example of how WWE can make someone live forever. Yeah, no, uh, that's what's great about this business. This business is is it respects heritage and it pays homage to the uh, the figures that that build build what it is that we all love Andre the giant being obviously one of them. But, you know, I think of someone that I was fortunate enough to be in the ring with Ric Flair. I've told the story before. I'll tell it really quickly in Dallas American airlines arena. I go out and I'm in the ring and Mike Kyoto's the ref. And then Ric Flair's music hits. And I go from wrestler to fan. I'm standing there like this. And Kyoto had to come over and whisper in my ear, stop being a fan. And I was like, oh, yeah. And then I started back into my thing. But that's because, I mean, I was in the ring with a legend. And I'm happy that uh, WWE pays tributes and pays homage to uh, to legendary figures, guys that yeah, guys that, that, that not only instilled my love for this business, but guys that, you know, paved the way so I could have a career. I meant it. I said it at my, when I won Tough Enough, I thanked um i thank the people that paved the way and i meant it and i still thank them even 15 years later uh double double kick flip how much how much, can i say this go for it how much puss were you slaying in the wwe days also have a good day <laughs> great question um uh, we that's crazy man we just literally did a video and that was one of the questions i got on that too um yeah man I, I, like hey like, like like i said earlier i'm human i'm human i make uh i make mistakes i'll, I'll put it this way i did i did okay i did okay <laughs> other guys did better i did okay uh wr maven you're amazing i agree no i'm kidding thank you Maybe you're amazing and super talented. Thank you for your time in the WWE. Because, like I said, I love your work and still do. You're an awesome and, and so nice. And I, and I it's a long time. And I still have your figure on my wall. Support everything you do. WR, thank you so much, brother. Um, dude, I'll disagree with you. I don't think I was super talented. I think I was okay. Um, when I think of super talented, I think of Shelton Benjamin. I think of Randy Orton. I think of CM Punk. I think of John Moxley. I think of Seth Rollins. I think of guys that could literally wrestle their way out of a wet paper bag if they had to. I, that was not me. Um, but I thank you for the uh, I, I thank you for the kind words, and more importantly, I just thank you for the support. The fact that you're still interested in what it is I'm doing, and 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 the fact that you still have my action figure hanging up, that's pretty cool. I don't even have my action figure hanging up, so that's that's pretty cool. <laughs> Jerome <laughs> Levesque Boucher, you're related to Hunter? If WWE called and offered you a mouthpiece role, would you consider it, or do you prefer actual freedom of speech? All right. 
Let me show you how quick I would answer that. I'm going to have my man ask me and simply just ask me, hey, we would like to bring you back. Would you like a job? We would like to bring you yes. back. Yes. <laughs> of course. I mean, I don't think anything. The business has changed. Things are different now. And what changed them is, give me that. Give me this. Give me this. This changed everything. This right here changed the world. Guys are going to be a mouthpiece now. Guys are going to get their own personalities over and it's never going back. We're never going, we're never going backwards. So I believe even if I was able to go with a promotion, I don't think I would you know, be silenced at all. In fact, I think I could help um, some of the other, other uh, younger guys, maybe not, you know, fall, you know, fall, into some of the same you know, roadblocks I fell into, or maybe I could help, you know, prepare someone, you know, someone while obviously going out and being like you said, and I love that term by being a mouthpiece. I'd love to be a mouthpiece for someone to pay me. Yeah. Get paid to go out and talk, talk trash. Sign me up. Absolutely. Great question though. Um, RR Alherta 07. What are were your top three wrestling wrestling theme songs? Good question. Um, Gold Dust. I love Gold Dust theme. Um, second, I love Gangrel's theme. Loved it. But my favorite, the one that I still think is just some of the coolest music ever, was that original DX music. I love that. Just yeah, you know, bow to the master. Yeah, you know, and then that. Oh, I love that music. So good. So good. It really bothers people that I didn't like my music. Like it really gets to them. Wrestling Rant Studios. Maven, can you talk on the hilarious day Triple H came to tracks and yelled at tough enough contestants? Okay. When he came, we did not know. That was a shoot. We had no clue he was going to be there. They literally, we got there and they, what you saw was what happened. They put us in chairs and they said, face straight ahead. And, um, when like we thought people would come, we didn't know they were gonna open it up with him. When he came around the corner, it was literally, I mean, like, I mean, I was seeing somebody that I'd looked up to for years. And I still remember just thinking, my God, this guy's enormous. Like he was just huge. And um, yeah, but Hunter did Hunter did a favor that day. And you probably don't remember what happened, but he laid out what the business was like. And I wouldn't know this till later in life, but everything he said was a hundred percent true. 100% to a T down to the, you're away. You don't know what your family's doing. They don't know what you're doing. Everything was accurate. And here's why he did everyone a favor. There was a guy who from tough enough that day, Jason, who had one of the best physiques. I remember seeing him and thinking, my gosh, they're going to hire this guy just on, just on how amazing he looks. And Jason decided that, that the, after that, uh, after that uh, visit from Hunter, that the business was not for him. I think he did him a favor. It's something that if you weren't a hundred percent in, if you weren't a hundred percent committed, beat it hit the road. And I think Jason found out that day after hearing Hunter you know, tell what life on the road was like, he just knew it wasn't for him. So I think Hunter did everybody a favor. I think he definitely did Jason a favor. I don't know what happened to Jason. I hope he's doing well. I hope he realizes he made the right decision. Got time for a few more. I got to get to the airport guys here in a second. Uh, who was your favorite manager in HWA? Uh, Love you, brother. Too long. Uh, Brock, thank you for the gift, Brock. You know what? I'm going to change this up a little bit. We were talking last night and I'm going to give um, I'm going to give a, uh, a guy that saddens me that he's gone. And but this guy deserves all the all his flowers. The guy, there was a guy at HWA when I was there. His name was Stephen Bradley. And if you want to look him up, look him up. Steven uh, was probably one of the best wrestlers I ever saw. He was the guy who, when I was in HWA, Les Thatcher was running it. And Steven was the guy who, when Les wasn't there, ran everything. Steven was an amazing talent. And Steven passed away 
uh, years ago, never made it, never, never accomplished what his talent level was worthy of in the business. And he's the one guy that I just, I, I hate that he never got to, never got to experience his dream because if there's anybody that deserved it, it wasn't me. It was Steven. And just wanted to show Steve, Steve Bradley some love um, for what he accomplished. But I think we got time for one more and then we got to get to the airport guys. I, I'm so humble. Thank you so much. Music guy. What should the fan base be called? Maven Maniacs, Maven Knights, Maven Nation, Maven Masters, Maven Militia. Ooh, I like Maven Militia. Maven Wave, Maven Andrew, <laughs> Maven Force, Maven Mystics, Maven Mob, Maven Squad, Mavenists. The last three are my favorite. Maven Mob, Maven Squad, or Mavenists. Mavenists is pretty good. Yeah, Maven, you Mavenists. Guys, I'm not arrogant enough to think that I have a, a fan base like that. Music guy, thank you so much for the – that made me laugh, and that was a great one to finish on. Um, I promised you guys that I was going to do more of these, and we're going to. I'm going to try to at least do one live every few weeks. I uh, Again, I can't thank you enough for not only the support – that you guys are showing the channel, but the ideas you're giving us too. There's a lot of times in the comments, uh, he'll send me one. He'll be like, yo, this guy has a good video idea. And I'll read it. I'll be like, yeah, that's great. Let's do that. Um, but just the fact that like, I just, when I tell you I'm more, I would be more shocked if the sun didn't come up tomorrow than the success of this channel. I mean, it. I started this channel thinking, you know what? We might be able to scratch out some pocket money out of it. And the way it's taken off and the reach I've seen it having and the fact that I see other wrestlers using our format, man, it's so humbling. I'm so thankful. I owe you guys. Um, again, if you ever see me, come up to me, say something, say hi. I promise you I'm not a, I'm not an asshole. I, prom I promise you I'm not an arrogant, cocky whatever come up to me say hi i love it again you make my day i don't make yours i promise you that but from the bottom of my heart thank you so much um and again the last time we did one of these lives one of the per people in the comment said hey don't do it in a car next time do it in a fixed location here we are that was great advice keep giving me great advice keep keep helping me make this better because i don't want to stop I'm addicted now and I, but I want to, I want to give you guys what you're looking for. So guys, thank you so much. Um, thank you for the questions. Thank you so much for the, uh, for the donations. And again, also start thinking about where we can, uh, where we can make money go to good use because I do, I want to give back. I want this channel to be something that we're able to give back on. Again, the two that come to my mind, St. Jude's and something for animals. But if you have others, I'm all ears. I am all ears. I love you guys. And I thank you. And thank you for putting up with, uh, with, with me not being able to read and just being an idiot. So have a great day, have a great week. And, uh, I'll see you guys soon. Check out this Friday's video, this Friday's video, I'll, I won't bury the lead, but this was the hardest video for me ever to film. And this was the one I wrestled with in my head, whether I should or shouldn't do it. Finally, I'm like, listen, if I'm going to, if I'm going to give all of myself, I have to, I have to go all in. So check this week's video out for sure. Guys, take care. I love you. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. Are we still live? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I have no clue. What I'm so, oh, he's got this. Yeah, I, have no, I have no idea what. <laughs>